Metal project enclosures can be costly and sizing can be confusing, but it doesn't have to be. So let's take a closer look at how to make metal project enclosures. This is Cossador, Jonathan here. There's heaps of different types of project enclosures, but metal has unique properties. It's strong, it can take a hit, and it can handle high temperatures. It's electrically and thermally conductive, which can help with electromagnetic interference reduction and heat dissipation. And metal enclosures can reduce noise emissions and guard against external noises. But which type of metal? Galvanized, zinc alloy, aluminium, or stainless steel really depends on environmental conditions like weather, heat, and chemical resistance. But in this episode, I'll be making a metal project enclosure out of 0.55 mm zinc loom sheet metal. So the next question, how big or small must it be? The size of the project enclosure must be considered. I lay out all the internal components on a flat surface and arrange them with consideration of future access in mind until I have a suitable configuration. Then I think about how much clearance is necessary around all of the components. And on top of that, I add a little extra room for flexibility. And lastly, I need to consider any mounted switches, panels, or cable penetrations, and if their positions are going to affect the internal components and whether more space should be added. So I want to make a project enclosure that's 400 millimeters long, 200 millimeters wide, and 100 millimeters tall. I'll split the box into two sections, the top cover, which will cover the top and the two long sides and the bottom section, which will cover the bottom and the two short sides. On this section, I'll add tabs so I can attach the top to the bottom. I need to transfer my plan to the sheet metal, so I need to make a stencil. And stencils are great because it allows me to replicate my markings without redoing the measurements. So I managed to find this giant roll of paper in the garbage, but butcher's or packaging paper is ideal. Baking paper or even sticky tape printer paper will do. I measure out the 400 by 200 and the 100 by 200 millimeter boxes and then add the tabs afterwards. I've done this with grey lid and for precision that's best. But for the video I've used a marker to give a little contrast. The tabs are 25 millimeters long and I've put them on each edge of the bottom section of the enclosure. Where the sheet metal will fold, I've removed the corner by 30 millimeters. This is because when the sheet metal folds, I don't want it to be a true mitre or the tabs may interfere with each other and present a fold that's less than 90 degrees. And for the top, I've made it 405 millimeters by 202 millimeters by 105 millimeters for a bit of allowance on the inside so the bottom section slides in freely. Also, I've given allowances on the other measurements to provide an overhang on those edges that may be trimmed off later. I named the stencils and I cut off any excess overhanging paper. Now I have the stencils made, I need to transfer them to the sheet metal. So I put the sheet metal on the workbench and I place the stencils so that I don't waste sheet metal. And with some masking tape, I secure the stencils to where I wish to transfer the measurements. With a scribe, punch, or even a hardened metal screw and a hammer, I find where the lines intersect. I give it a gentle tap and leave a small indented dot on the sheet metal. And I do this for each of the intersecting lines. I remove the stencil and carefully join the dots with a marker or pencil. And I do the same for the other section. Now I have all the markings, it's time to cut it out. For this, I'm going to use some metal shears. And I'll start with the top. First I cut out a rough shape about 5mm away from the markings. Close enough so that I will not waste too much material. This will enable me to cut a line in finer detail because thinner strips of sheet metal curl away better from the shears. Now onto the bottom. I first do the rough cut. Then I go around the basic shape by passing the diagonal notches. Then when I cut the notches, I do two separate cuts, veering slightly off the line, leaving approximately one millimeter in the middle. This is important so that each side doesn't interfere with the other during folding. I bend it a few times and I snap it off. And I do this for each of the notches. Then I snip off any external corners and soften any sharp edges with a file. Now everything is cut out, it's time to fold everything. I prioritize folding top to bottom and visible to non-visible and reorder to make it easier but not change the quality of the folds. 
If you would like more information about bending sheet metal, please check out my other videos. I'll put a link in the description and add a card to this video. Now I have the two sections folded, I need to check the fit, making sure that the bottom section's tabs seat well on the top section. Sometimes external corners can interfere with the inside of folds, and they may need to be adjusted for a better fit. It's time to put this together. I select some sheet metal screws and a couple of drill bits, one bigger and one a little smaller than the screw's thread. I mark out the places I wish to put the screws on the top section, making sure that they will intersect with the tabs on the bottom section, and making sure that the sheet metal is firmly held or clamped down. With the larger drill bit, I drill a hole on each of those marks. Then I line up the two sections again, and through each of the holes I put a mark on the tabs of the bottom section. Then with a smaller drill bit, I drill the holes on each of the marks on the bottom section. And I check that all the screws go in, and everything is lined up. Now it's time to shore up the enclosure a bit, and fix any little problems or imperfections. If there are any mistakes, now is the time to fix it. I'll knock out any dents and trim off any overhangs that are unnecessary, and sand any bits that may make the finished product look better. For painting, I give them a good clean, then I give them a coat of paint on the external parts of the enclosure and any visible edges. I let it dry and I screw it all back together, and it's done. Okay, the evaluation. It's not perfect, the cuts and folds really could have been given more time, but that isn't always required and function at times is more important, and most definitely it's strong, to size, and it will serve its purpose. Sometimes we can't get a measurement right, or make exactly what we want the first time around, but that's not necessarily the sign of a novice, it's the sign of prototyping and making something new. And if this was useful to you, please like, subscribe and turn on notifications. And if you would like me to do a video about something else, just comment below. Thanks for watching, and remember guys, break it till you make it, and I'll see you next time.